Hi, welcome back to Shades of Radiology. Today we are going to see ultrasound spotters uh, mainly concentrated on uh, obstetrics and gynec cases. Uh, don't miss this uh, excellent spotters which are very classic and we regularly encounter this in our daily practice. So let us move on to the first case. Case 1. You can pause the video and you can just go through the findings, you can analyze the image and then you can come to the conclusion. Everything is depicted very clearly, even the gestational age has been given. So what is your diagnosis? It's an inevitable abortion and there are various types of abortion that is threatened, inevitable, complete, incomplete and missed abortion. And each one has its own findings and in our case, you can see the gestational sac is elongated slightly lower in the endometrial cavity and even the cervical os is open partly and there is no cardiac activity which is suggestive of inevitable abortion. Coming to case 2, again fetal, lower abdomen or uh, pelvis of the fetus. You can see a large abdominal pelvic cyst and on color doppler you can see two umbilical vessels on either side. So it is a dilated urinary bladder. This is a case of megacystis. So when will you label it as megacystis? If the, the longitudinal dimension that is you can see here the urinary bladder is dilated and the longitudinal dimension if it is more than 7 mm we call it as megacystis in the first trimester and coming into the second trimester if it is more than 30 mm we call it as megacystis and the important point which we have to remember in the first trimester is up to 15 mm the megacystis might resolve into the second trimester but if this dilatation of urinary bladder or the megacystis persists in the second trimester or if it is more than 15 mm in the first trimester it's highly associated with obstructive uropathy and also sometimes with the chromosomal and renal anomalies so careful evaluation and follow up of this megacystis is very much essential for the diagnosis and conclusion of megacystis coming to case 3 a classic case 30 year old female with lower anterior abdominal wall pain so you can see the classic lesion and very common finding that is a scar endometriosis. You can see a uh, well defined hypoechoic lesion with few hyperechoic areas and the borders are sometimes at places it may not be well defined. You can see it is in the midline as well and this is a classic case of scar endometriosis and the patient will have a cyclical abdominal pain. And these many patients with scar endometriosis do not have classical signs previously means they not they might not have endometriosis all the time and which supports the theory that the dissemination of endometrial glands or cells into the wound at the time of surgery have, might have happened this is the cause for scar endometriosis coming to the case 4 again a classic fetal case at the level of chest at the level of cardia you can see the cardia very clearly and what you are seeing here is a uniform echogenic lesion in the left lung, entire lung, you can see the mediastinum is shifted towards right side and also vascularity showing the vessel which is going into the echogenic lung. So this is a case of congenital pulmonary adenomatoid malformation. The term CCAM has been now uh, not used very commonly because of various uh, uh, pathophysiology happening over there. So this is a case of CPAM. You can see an echogenic left lung almost entire hemithorax you can see the sagittal plane its entire left lung is completely echogenic and there is a mediastinal shift towards right side and doppler you can see the vessel is arising from the left pulmonary artery but not from the systemic vessels which again is uh, very helpful to differentiate from the sequestration so this is a, a case of microcystic cpam coming to the case 5 a very classic case and commonly seen nowadays because of increased ultrasound examination especially in the females infertility and all those things so you can what you can see is a an echogenic lesion in the endometrial cavity and once the color doppler has been applied you can see the vascular pedicle which is going into the lesion so this is a classic case of endometrial polyp and usually this is more echogenic than myometrium and isoechoic with the endometrium and it can be either sessile or pedunculated and you can see a single feeding vessel going into the lesion and there is some important echogenic characteristics which we need to remember while reporting the endometrial polyp 
if it is hyperechoic it's an endometrial polyp no doubt in it and if it is heterogeneous always think of malignant kind of transformation that can, that might be happening in the polyp and if it is hypoechoic think of submucosal fibroid rather than endometrial polyp so keep these things in mind while reporting endometrial polyp uh, which we encounter on ultrasound coming to case 6 again a classic one you don't need much time for diagnosis this is a classic spotter it is anencephaly so anencephaly is mainly due to the failure of closure of one of the anterior neuropores and it is the most severe form of neural tube defect and also the most common neural tube defect which we encounter in our daily practice so this is the pathophysiology which i have explained in the below image or flow chart you can see failure of cranial end of neural tube which usually closes by fourth week if it doesn't happen it will result in a neural tube defect and when there is an abnormal development of calvarium we call it as acrania and the protrusion of brain which is well formed into the cranium from the cranium into the gestation or what do you say the amniotic cavity it is called as hexencephaly and without any protection of skull the brain is exposed and undergoes degeneration even the brain will be mal formed you can you don't see a normal brain that is anencephaly coming to the next case you can see the gestational age is 14 weeks this is a uterus showing an echogenic lesion with multiple hypoto anechoic areas which are very well defined and round so this is a case of molar pregnancy so always go through about this gestational trophoblastic disease correlation with beta hcg and once it is confirmed once we start the treatment always correlate with beta hcg when should we consider whether it is a progressive or whether it is going for a chorea carcinoma or not and all those things so carefully read about this molar pregnancy how it has to be evaluated how it has to be followed up with the beta hcg levels coming to the next case right ovary what you can see here you can see a clear fluid like structure around the right ovary a classic diagnosis it is peritoneal inclusion cyst usually this peritoneal inclusion cyst is a small localized collection uh, it can have a very large it can go into large cystic lesion sometimes which occupies the enter pelvis uh, and there is no any discrete limiting wall in this peritoneal inclusion cyst you can see like uh, it's like insinuating between the structures whatever is present in the pelvis and there will be no mural nodularity in this peritoneal inclusion cyst and ovary is eccentrically placed at one side of the cystic area and one more characteristic pattern if present is a diagnostic flu per for peritoneal inclusion cyst it is the spider web pattern so you can see some projections from the surrounding structure here also you can see some from surrounding structures there are protruding into the collection or into the cyst which give an appearance of spider web pattern of which is classic of peritoneal inclusion cyst another classic one right at nexa you can see a well defined lesion with echogenic round structures and some heterogeneous content within the lesion as well so this is again a very classic appearance always don't forget this appearance it is a dermoid cyst and this dermoid cyst has very uh, varied spectrum of sonographic features it can be diffusely echogenic uh, and it might have a mural nodule with cystic lesion and it might have multiple dot and dash pattern kind of thing which is called as dermoid mesh sometimes and color doppler will show no vascularity at all in dermoid cyst and sometimes you can see as intracystic floating balls multiple echogenic balls within the cyst which is very characteristic of dermoid cyst but not commonly seen uh, so these are the various features of dermoid cyst which we need to uh, be uh, acquainted with daily practice because we see lots of cases of dermoid cyst in our routine practice coming to case 10 fetal pelvis again a classic sign and diagnosis so this is a case of keyhole sign you can see the dilated urinary bladder and dilated anterior urethra or proximal urethra sorry dilated posterior urethra that is the proximal urethra is dilated due to, most commonly seen due to the posterior urethral valves so this is the keyhole sign appearance of urinary bladder and dilated proximal urethra coming to case 11 again a classic one no one can commit a mistake on this that is a classic lemon sign which is in this case it was sherative malformation always uh, try to evaluate the associated features along with the deformed skull so if you see there is some smooth concave concavity towards this side 
outside it is concavity and here it is convexity so always careful evaluation is very much important that concavity must happen to call it as 11 sign sometimes there might be a smooth uh, straightening of the border of the skull sometimes we cannot call it as 11 sign you should see some indentation which is going along the bone then we should call it as 11 sign and 10% of the uh, fetuses it can be normal and gradually can resolve over a period of time another classic one this is the 3d ultrasonography of pelvis you can see an echogenic uh, endometrium and uterus the shape is very characteristic it is a unicornate uterus uh, kindly go and read about the x-ray classification uh, of uh, mullerian anomalies so this is a unicornate uterus it can be of various types which has been shown here that is the communicating horn non-communicating horn no cavity or no horn so there will be only one horn you can see here there will be no associated horn here so this is a unicornate uterus so this is the classification of or subtypes of unicornate uterus coming to case 13 again a 3d uh, grayscale kind of picture and there is no funnel cleft in this case so what you can see the endometrial cavity is been divided into or splitting of endometrial cavity has happened with smooth funnel cleft there is no funnel cleft in this case so this is a case of partial septate uterus suppose in case this is extending down till this level we call it as complete septate uterus so our case is a case of partial septate uterus and this is one important table which you need to keep that in mind that is the septate uterus and bicornate uterus which is very essential to differentiate you can shoot you need to look for the frontal contour you need to assess the frontal depth how much depth or front indentation has been happened from the frontal surface as well as the endometrial cavity uh, and also evaluate the intercornal angle and distance for better uh, diagnostic uh, conclusion so always read about these types of uh, septate and bicornate uterus you can screenshot this slide which is very important to differentiate both of them coming to case 14 again this is uh, pelvis usg pelvis gestational age is of 8 weeks, 6 days, you can see this is the left ovary, left adnexial lesion, you can see the uterus, the endometrial cavity and this is the color doppler you can see and some amount of echogenic fluid in the pelvis. So this is a straightforward diagnosis, empty endometrial cavity, gestational age has been given as 8 weeks, 6 days, there is no gestational sac and you can see uh, left adnexial mass which is seen on grayscale and in color doppler you can see the flow within the adnexial mass as well. So this is a case of tubal ectopic pregnancy go back and read about this uh, tubal ectopic pregnancy once again and again this is a classic case you can see the spotter case 15 left lower limb right lower limb so it is a bilateral club foot when both tibia and fibula are seen in the same image as the medially deviated foot and the foot may additionally have a plantar flexion as well so we give we confirm the diagnosis of club foot so always look for other associated anomalies because usually the club foot is not isolated which is very rare uh, look for other soft markers as well for detection of further chromosomal anomalies coming to case 16 this you can see the uterus you can see a lot of tortuous tortuosity or tortuous vessels you can see the color doppler showing extensive vascularity showing arterial flow you can see the spectrum which is having an arterial flow not the venous flow so this is a case of acquired abm or increased myometrial vascularity which is very important condition which we might encounter sometimes acquired enhanced myometrial vascularity or previously known as avm can occur after unsuccessful pregnancies or treatment with uh, dnc or cesarean or cesarean scar pregnancy as well and this ultrasound evaluation is very much important uh, for categorization of this uh, increased myometrial vascularity so if the psv is less than 60 you need the follow up whether it is getting resolved or not and if it is between 60 to 80, it might need follow up or it might be categorized based, based on individual. And if it is the PSV of this vascularity is more than 80 centimeters per second, it needs an embolization. So careful evaluation is very important. Coming to case 17, again a classic one. You can pause the video if you have to, if you want to assess or discuss about this case. So this is a classic case of multicystic dysplastic kidney you can see the multiple cysts which are noted in the right kidney and a central dilated cystic structure it's a case of 
multicystic dysplastic kidney which is type 2 in this case this was the dilated renal pelvis in this case and this is hydronephrotic type obstructive type which is very non classical and there is another most common type which is pelvi infundibular which is classical type of multicystic dysplastic kidney so the multiple small non communicating renal cysts representing the dilated calyces with atresia of the ureter, ureter and renal pelvis so that is the pelvi infundibular type of multicystic dysplastic kidney and most of the times sometimes this mcdk is associated with other anomalies coming to the last case so this is again obstetric case you can see the fetus you can see the placenta you can see some thick membrane like structure so this is a case of placental shelf with sometimes associated with uh, circumvallate placenta you can see the edge of the placenta might be rolled up and you can see the membrane uh, usually the placenta shelf a shelf like smooth regular structure uh, which will be present at the base at the edge of the placenta and it tapers towards the free edge uh, which is protruding into the amniotic cavity which is called as circumvallate pla placenta sometimes it might be associated with placental shelf thank you all for your patient listening kindly go through these spotters once again because these are very classically seen uh, classic cases which has been contributed by dr surabhi thank you very much once again for providing such a uh, classic cases to us thank you all